Hi everyone. Uh, I'd like to present something today about uh, counting and counting patterns and where numbers belong in number lines and so on. But instead of using the traditional uh, counting charts, which we've done in the past, what I'd like to look at today is using the old bead strings. Now, we often think that materials such as this are limited to just the junior grades, and I apologise to anyone out there who's thinking, no, 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 I use them in the senior grades. Well done, I love it. But this is something that I just love to use with the older children, and they love to use them too. So I just want to look at some ways of using bead strings such as these in developing counting patterns and number lines and just being able to build numbers. Yeah. Here we are using our bead string and it just it's another way of counting without having to rely on uh, a number chart. Uh, with these bead strings, initially, I'd lo I love getting the kids to actually make the bead strings because they see uh, the value starting at zero and then becoming a quantity of something. They have greater ownership over them if they've made them. But if they haven't, I'll bring this bead string into the lesson. I'll hang it up rather than being on the floor like this, which I've done for you at this purpose so you can see it all better. Um, what I would do is I'd hold it up. We'll get two kids to hold it up and say, well, how many beads are on here? How many do you think? Often they'll say 100 because we're so conditioned into counting to 100, whether it be by our counting chants that we might do in class, our counting charts that we use. Um, a lot of things are governed just 100. I really love going over 100 so they get that experience with learning the numbers of the hundreds plus the teens and so on. So, as you can see, this one I've got it in groups of 10 and there's 12 of them, so we've got 120. I prefer using the colours for 10s so that they get used to that counting by 10s and finding the halfway mark rather than just random colours. So, what we've got here, if I just start it, this can be done for all ages, um, not just the junior grades. I use this with the grade fives and sixes, and they love it because they often they get the experience of using beads. Now, um, also you could use string rope with clothes pegs, but there's just something about the manipulating and the, just the feeling of the uh, pegs. So what I'm going to do here, for the pretty well the starting point, would be I'll find my numbers, which I seem to have lost everywhere. So if I had um, one of my first ones, so for example, if I, this was number one here, and I've lost my number one somewhere here, but if I went to the next part, clearly number two, and then number three. So straight away, as soon as I put a second number there, I know what I'm counting by. If that's number three, where then would this number go? Do I go back and start counting by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or do I know that? If this is 10, I know that 8 is 2 less than 10. I would then know that, where would this one go? 12. Well, do I go back and count from 1, 2, 3, or do I count on from 8, or do I go from 10, 11, 12? And there I go. And so on and so forth. Putting the cards where they belong. Um, Likewise, I could do this, where would this be, this number go, if I'm counting by ones, by the way, 19. Do I start from ones? I can do that. I will find it. That's where your child might be at. Others might know that. Oh, 10, and count on from 10. Or well, others might know 10, 20, 1 less than 20 is 19. We find out a lot of where the kids' understandings are, but how they find where the beads belong. Now, this next part, we can do other things. Let's go into larger numbers. It doesn't always have to be counting by ones. Where would this number belong? Some children might go, oh, well, we know that this is 120, so it's a bit of a benchmark. We know that the halfway mark is going to be 60, so which is about up here somewhere, so we know it's going to be in this vicinity somewhere. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. If I know that's 50, it that helps me then count on further. But what if this happened? Where would I put 25? Well, do we go back to 1 and count? Or do we know it's about halfway between 1 and 50? So there's 10, 20, 
25, about right there, and so on. Now, that doesn't always have to be 50. That doesn't always have to be 1. That doesn't always have to be 2. For example, if I made this one 50, people would say, but you can't do that. Well, we can, because if that was 50, we could then make this one 60. If I can find 60 here, here it is, I could make that one 60. The start of the orange. Does it always have to be like that? No. That could be 50. I wonder if we could make that one 60. What would this one then be? And 40, 30, 20, 10, could that be zero? Minus 10, minus 20, minus 30, that's negative numbers. The ways we can introduce it to the older children. This number here, so you can change the range. The numbers can represent anything at all. As soon as a number is placed somewhere, for example, this could be 20. This could be anything, it could be 18 and a half, 19 and a half, whatever. Like some children might come up with all different ways that they're doing their counting. You're counting by halves, by quarters, by decimals, whatever. But here's where it can become a good challenge for the kids too. Where or what number could this be? And a child writes a number on it and they just put it there. They might have written 67. What would the number beside it be? Does it have to be 68? Another child might put something else. They might put 68. So 67, 68, we are counting by ones. 67, they might write 167. That gives a clue as to what we're counting by. If this was 67, they might write 77. They might write 80, 72. As soon as another number goes there, it gives us a clue as to what the counting pattern could or may be. And that means that a number, that number could represent 1, it could represent 10, 100, 1,000, 1 million. It could represent anything at all. So, just a few ideas on using beads, and I hope you enjoy them. Enjoy making them, but above all, enjoy using them and use them a lot. Have them out on the tables, have them accessible for the kids because they will continue to generate counting patterns. Have fun. Cheers.